This is Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the UK Euro Market Watch. Once again, we're with the weird setup. Uh, we're actually planning to move out relatively soon, and as such, things are everywhere. As you can see, boxes in the background over there where we've started to pack up. Uh, and also, on top of that, everyone in the house has decided to be today to be the noisiest fucking day in the world. So apologies if there are any weird sounds in the background, but enough waffling on, let's get stuck into the video. So today we are gonna be looking at the mega tins, uh, primarily to see how they're getting on with the prices set a little bit more. We're gonna look at Rise of the Duelist as well, to see how those prices are getting on, primarily with Dogmatica. Uh, amongst other things and we're going to take a look at a select few other cards that have been requested as always on this we are looking at good condition and upwards and in english but we're going to be taking a look at card market see how the prices are moving if you're interested in seeing more of this kind of content make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss out in future we have these every monday evening and uh, yeah let's get stuck in shall we so we're starting off today's market watch by taking a look at Red Eye's Dark Dragoon. See how that's getting on now that we're a couple of weeks from its release. Just to see how things are going and see what changes it's making on the market. So we're seeing them around 38 euros if you want one in English. You can get them for about 3 or 4 euros cheaper if you don't mind getting them in German or French or other languages in general. But for the most part you're looking up between that 37 to 40 mark on the whole. Continuing on with looking at the tins, we're looking at IP Masquerade. You can get the secret rare for just under 10 euros a pop. I think that this is still a really, really solid pickup. It is trending down with very slightly, but I would note that I do think that this will go up over time when people want the highest available rarity, other than Starlight, of course, that they can actually play with in their deck. So I do think that we'll expect to see this recover after a little while. Now is not a bad time to consider picking this one up, in my opinion. After that, we have Borrowload Savage Dragon. Finally got that reprint we've all been waiting for, and a nice rarity bump. It's a shame we haven't seen this get the ulti treatment so far, in my opinion, but there you go. These are just under 13 euros a pop. Again, I think a really solid price for this. It could be something we see go up to the 20 euro mark. Some people, I've even heard calling for this to get banned. I think that's absolutely insane. I really don't think it's a bannable card. Uh, but it is really, really strong and something that you should absolutely have in your binders or at least available to you to be able to play. Next, looking at Starleash Safer. Uh, this is the reprint from the tins. The secret rares, of course, uh, probably the more desirable of the rarities. But I think Ultras, if you're looking for something to punt on, uh, just under 3 euros a pop. I think these are really, really good pickup. I do think that if Dragon Link starts to take over the format, which it's looking very, very strong. And if it doesn't get hit going into the next format, it could well be a contender then you might see these prices go up for people who want to play it on a budget. Of course, the secrets will go up even higher, but the Ultras themselves are really not a bad pickup at €3 Euros a pop. It's worth noting as well that these have loads of application outside of that. Dragon decks are always going to be really, really useful, so are Chaos decks, and therefore this will always, always have some degree of playability. Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess, just under 12 euros a pop for these at the moment. Again, something that I would expect to creep up over time. Uh, obviously, the higher rarities are more expensive as well, but if you're looking for something a bit more budget friendly, this might be a really good shout for you. Again, I could easily see these pushing back up towards that 20 euro mark, especially once the print of these runs out and people realize that they still need copies of this. It is worth noting though that we are getting this in gold rare, so that may have an effect on the price down the line. Something to consider. I do think though that most people would prefer the ultras over the gold rares, unless they come out looking particularly nice. Next, we're looking at Pot of Extravagance, something that has absolutely fought tooth and nail, not really to go down in price, all that much. Still 20 euros a pop for a secret rare, which really isn't that bad when you consider all things. It may, however, be worth spending the extra and getting the original prints. They do look slightly nicer than this one. It is worth noting again that we've got multiple prints of this out now, and I expect more to come, so this price will likely come down over time. So if you are looking to punt on one, it's probably better to go for the original printing rather than this one. But if you want to play it on a budget, this should be an option for you. Ice Dragon's Prison, one that I've been asked to look at, but one that I wanted to cover anyway from Rise of the Duelist. This has been creeping up. Look at this. Over the uh, over the space of a month, we've seen this go up to 11 euros from around 2 euros. That's on the trend, at least. At the moment, you can get them for around 9 euros a piece. But again, expect this to creep up gradually over time. We saw this getting used against Eldritch in, uh, what was it, the Remote Duel Tournament for the US, uh, where they were picking up an Eldritch and banishing two copies of it, which would normally blow the opponent out. And that is why we're seeing this price continue to rise up. 
Onto some of the pricier cards from the Tins Triple Tactics talent. One that has actually started to recover quite well in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we saw it bottom out towards the 50 euro mark. It is pushing back up towards the 60 euro mark now. 58 euros for the absolute cheapest on here. But again, most of them sat well above that mark up towards the 70. Don't be surprised if these start to disappear around this kind of price and it gets pushed back up towards that 70 mark. Forbidden Droplet, another card that did drop down a little bit, but this is absolutely insane in the current format. It does also deal with Dragoons, so something to consider, which might be part of the reason that we're seeing the price recover and gradually creep back up towards that 70 mark. Again, one available at 59 euros, and the rest are 65 and above. Again, expect them to disappear at this bottom end and start to creep up towards that 70 euro mark. Next, we're looking at Nadir Servant. In fact, we're just looking at Dogmatica in general at the more pricey or slightly better cards from the set. So we're looking close to 60 euros at the going rate on this. It is, again, gradually creeping back up. A lot of people are choosing to play this as their control deck of the format, although it does contend with uh, Eldritch in that respect, although most people, in fact, are even looking at sort of splatting the two together, if you will. And that's why we're seeing this price continue to creep back up. Again, expect this to continue to head up a little bit. It's a really, really solid splashable engine and looks like it will continue to be so going forward. We're still seeing it do absolute bits in the OCG. So again, expect that to be reflected here. Uh, and, and, and if you underestimate that, do so at your peril. The prices on Ecclesia are starting to calm down a little bit, settling around the 18 euro mark. I don't expect it to go down from here. I guess we'll probably see it float between here and just around that 20 mark. Again, over time, as this deck becomes more robust and we, people realise it's going to be played throughout the formats, we may even see this price creep up a little bit over time. Again, a really, really solid pickup. This deck is absolutely awesome. One that I'm piloting myself. I would highly recommend it to anyone who wants a consistent, solid deck to play with for the foreseeable future. Next, we're taking a look at Maximus, one that I absolutely am refusing to play in my deck. I think it's a side deck quality at best, but we won't get into that now. I will have a deck profile coming up discussing all of that. A lot of people are cutting this from the deck because a lot of people are filling their extra deck with targets in case they get hit with this card. I will say it does make your combos a little bit easier, so at most people are tending to play one copy. An awful lot of people are going to a position where they simply side it. And as a result, we're seeing the price tank through the floor. Six euros and fifty a piece. Again, these are super, super easy to pick up. One of the lowest valued secrets from the set. And next up, we're looking at Fleur de Lis. Again, slightly less in demand than Ecclesia, despite the fact being a higher rarity. Uh, these are around the 15 euro mark on the whole. Again, one I don't really expect to see move too much from around here. I think it is going to settle around this kind of price. It is a, an important card for the deck, but not one that you need three of, and certainly not as in quite higher demand as Ecclesia. Next, we're looking at Bastard. Sorry, not Bastard. They fixed the name to Titanic Lad, the Ash Dragon. And just as rubbish as it's been renamed, it's also a rubbish low price, I guess, for anyone that has them and wants to sell them, that is. Again, around the €7 euro mark is the going rate. We are seeing them slightly, slightly higher as we go a little bit further down, as to be expected. But overall, this has trended down from that €10 euro mark that it was at the beginning. Again, I don't really expect to see it drop too much below this because it is one of those cards to play as a one or two of. So I think that it will hold value around here, but it's not one that I see spiking up anytime soon. Next up, we're looking at Predator Plant Vert Anaconda. Unsurprisingly, going through the roof, and I've been telling you all for months that this is something that you needed in your collection because the price was going to go up. These went as low as 12 euros not so long ago, uh, and I was telling you then to buy them, and now they've almost doubled that. A minimum of 21 euros. Most of them sat in that 23 to 25 range for the most part. Uh, again, you would have doubled your investment had you picked them up when I told you to, so listen to me in future, God damn it, This card is incredibly important at the moment because Dragoon is taking over the format and probably will continue to do so. An absolutely staple card for the extra deck at the moment. Next up, we're looking at Entis, one of those cards that, again, is creeping into just about every extra deck on the planet. Really, really important in case you do get hit with that Maximus, but also, of course, lots of people are playing it in the decks because they're playing the engine. So, as such, we are seeing the prices, well, pretty much all over the place, but more or less in that solid 4 to €5 euro region. I don't expect it to go down, despite the fact that we're seeing that trend here. Uh, I think we're going to probably see it pick back up, and it's going to continue to yo-yo between that 4 and 5 mark. And now we're on to the requests. We're looking at Ancient Gear Golem Ultimate Rare. Someone told me these were at 1,000 euros. Let's go ahead and see if that is the truth. Okay, so not so... Well, not so much a lie. Let's put it that way. Uh, the lowest 
the lowest price one you can get is in near mint. Um, that's at a hundred euros. Then the rest are in just good condition. And then if you want something in near mint at first edition, a thousand euros is the cost. Absolutely baffling as to why. I know that this is obviously one of those old sets, no longer in print, pretty much impossible to get. And I guess from a collector's perspective, that's why it's so high. Next, we're looking at Ulti Tour Guides, one that people are tipping to come off the list. So inevitably, the prices are slowly creeping up, as we can see here. If we ignore this anomaly, which is down here, the majority of them are pushing up. The cheapest you can get it in in good condition is €94 Euros a pop. If you want something in near mint, you're looking at a minimum of €110. Euros, but many of them are priced much, much higher, up towards a €200 Euro mark. Again, expect this to likely continue to go up, especially up and until we have a ban list. And of course, if it does get unlimited on list, expected to shoot absolutely through the roof. One of the requests we had was Skull Servant LOB First Edition. Let's go ahead and take a look. You can get them in good condition from 49 cents and upwards. Two euros at minimum, though, for something in First Edition near Mint. Next up, we're taking a look at Psy Frame Lord Lambda, a minimum of five euros a piece. Uh, expect this again to continue to rise up. Everybody and their fucking nan is maining gammas and drivers. Driver that you will always open in your hand, of course. So we are seeing these at minimum of five euros a piece. Apologies about my dickhead dog that's barking in the background. Part of the reason I'm trying to move out of this goddamn house. And continuing our talk a little bit earlier about the ban list, lots of people tipping Rusty Barish to come off. Personally, I don't think it should at all, but we are seeing new Phantom Knight cards come out in one of the sets later on this year, and so as such people are expecting this might come off. We are seeing it as cheap as 30 cents a pop, 50 cents if you want something in near mint. Probably something worth picking up and having a copy of, because if it does come off the list, expect this to go and shoot up quite significantly. If you're someone that's looking to invest, maybe picking up multiple copies of these at the lower end is probably not a bad shout. And then to round off today's video, we're taking a look at a few different copies of Harbees Feather Dust. I wanted to see how the prices are getting on. Of course, lots and lots of people are tipping again that this to come off. Personally, I don't think it will happen yet because they're still going to be able to sell Lightning Storms and packs that have Lightning Storms, so it doesn't make much sense for them to bring this off just yet but something to consider. So if you want them in English near mint, you can't fucking have them. That's tough shit. Let's go ahead and take a look what they're like in other languages. And uh, you also can't get those either. So if you want tournament pack ones, uh, go fuck yourself, I guess. Now, if you're happy with a nice secret rare printing that isn't going to cost you too, too much, you can get them for around a 30 euro mark if you want something near mint. If you want a little bit cheaper, you can save yourself a whole cent and get it in just good condition. Obviously, you just spend the extra. Uh, again, the price on these is slightly trending upwards if we look overall, although this is over a long period of time. This is probably where we've had more expectancy in this coming off the list, where we would have seen it spike up here. Again, one that I expect to continue to trend upwards as the likelihood increases over time of this coming off the list. It is off the list in the OCG, so don't be surprised if it does come off. And honestly, I think it can come back in the modern game with no problem at all. A slightly different secret rare print, and again, if you don't mind having a slightly cheaper ver version of the card, which most people won't, you can get them in first edition near mint for around 20 euros if you don't mind getting the mega pack version instead. Again, saving yourself some money and more or less getting the same value of print in card. For those of you who like to put your opponent on tilt when you use star foils instead, you can get yourself a star foil rarity of this feather dust. I'm going to feather dust this fucking chihuahua out the garden in a minute. God damn it. 12 euros at a minimum, pushing up towards our 15 euro mark on the whole. And our final card for today, we are looking at the False Bound Kingdom promo. These are impossible to get, allegedly. Let's go ahead and open this up to absolutely anything and just see what is out there. If there is anything on card market, it'll be interesting to see if this is a possibility. Okay, so if you want these in Spanish, because that's the only language you can get them in, you can pay 1,500 euros for something good. In near mint, 5,000 euros, or if you just fancy paying an extortionate amount, you can order these all the way from Ireland and get them for 69,420 euros and 69 cents. Nice! And that is all for today's Market Watch. Thank you very much for checking in, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Again, if you would like to see more of this kind of content, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up if you did really enjoy it. And we don't just do this kind of content. We do deck profiles, how to play videos, loads and loads of off-humor stuff, especially with the Locals vlogs. If you're into that kind of rubbish, you can go ahead and check that out as well. Thanks again for checking in. Uh, once again, make sure you subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. 
This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.